Hello YouTube, this is Skype Priority Pokemon Atmatic and I am bringing you a Pokemon 4th Gen Wi-Fi Bella video. I am playing Soul Silver in this one and the battle is against Swan from the Zod Pokemon Wi-Fi room. And again, I see Shuckle, Swampert, and Skarmory, and Tyranitar and those are like some of the biggest OUs in, in the history of 4th Gen. Well, I don't know, but Seeing those, seeing three walls, or maybe four walls in the same, in the same sense, it's like, what? Really? So, I decided to go with my sky catcher to start because I, I, I predicted a Skarmory to start. And with that, that's the reason why I started with Flamethrower. And it only took it down to that much. Then I saw the Stealth Rack, I'm like, okay, that's something else I expected. So he withdraws Skarmory, brings in Dragonite. I again predicted that too. But that was the reason why I did Aura Sphere because I thought he was going to bring in Tyranitar or something like that. Of course, that was a little goof, so it didn't go that way. Aura Sphere hits Dragonite with just a little bit of damage. So my goal mainly was to do a flamethrower to produce a burn. Especially on the Dragonite, it's because of the fact that I knew that there was going to be a Dragon Dance in that. But I didn't see that at first. However, the Flamethrower did produce the burn that I was expecting, which will have the effect of the 75% of the attack being gone. That was why the Thunder Punch that happened did not affect it as much as Skycatcher would usually do. Now with the Air Slash, I already knew that the Dragonite had Inner Focus, so I knew that there wasn't going to be much of an effect on the Air Slash. I wasn't expecting to flinch, but I did want to do some stab damage on the Dragonite, so with the burn damage and the air slash, I was pretty much bringing the Dragon Knight to about 35, maybe 40%. With the plus one in attack, which is not too really much of a problem, it goes for a Thunder Punch. And it is, the Dragon Knight is gonna come that close, but no cigar. Another stab, air slash will pretty much Pay it down to about nine to about two percent. It's gonna go up a few, but unfortunately the burn is going to take down the Dragonite, so that is one big problem out of my way. Thank goodness for that. So here comes Shuckle, and I'm like, okay, here comes the flame. I was gonna do a flamethrower, but I decided to go differently. I decided to go for the air slash because either way it goes, flamethrower or Air Slash would do good enough. So here comes good old Swamper. And I'm like, great. Let me get this thing out the way. So I went for Air Slash. It took it down to our yellow. So it was under 50%. I was hoping for it to be like 47, 48%. It got a little bit back. Uh, the flinch. Happens, so I'm like sweet. So I do air slash again. Here comes ice punch. I'm like, oh well. S at least Skycatcher did what it needed to do against Dragonite. So no problems there. So after Swamper was gone, I decided to bring in. Louis Pierre, even though that was a little bit of a risky play, knowing he could switch out the Tyranitar, but Swampert didn't really have as much as I expected. And it tried to use Miracle, but unfortunately, I already knew that it was going to do that, so I decided to wait on using any attacks, which I was smart enough to do, because... A regular second would probably not do enough damage on the Swamper, and I end up being majorly flipped by the Miracle. So I decided to do the Calm Mind first before doing the Stab Psychic. It takes down Swamper. That was pretty good on there. So with that, here comes Tyranitar. 
And here comes the sandstorm. One of the worst things I hate about about dragon about playing any type of game is that I always have to deal with sandstorm. Weather teams are always something I deal with a lot. So anyway, they used to Thunderbolt, it really took that much. Then I see an ice punch. Whoops, that's two guys with ice punch. And I get a critical with that, really? That that was almost unfair at all. So, in any case, I am just standing there, just waiting and waiting and waiting. So, I do another calm mine. Maybe it was going to do another ice punch. Uh, unfortunately, I predicted that wrong. And the crunch came, so it was like, great. So, all that work I did with Lunar Pierre to get us up to plus two was pretty much down to zero. So there's the flop right there. <laughs> so as I wait for the sandstorm to come in, I bring in the guy of the hour. That's my Romeo Plank, Wish Cash. I love I love Romeo Plank for a reason. That's because it forces switches like that. He switches into Shuckle, I go for Dragon Dance. I was just, the only moves that I know Shuckle have are probably status moves like Toxic and Rap and stuff like that, which really wouldn't matter to me because, again, I'm just going to go for the sweep when it comes down to playing Wish Cash. So I do another Dragon Dance. That's now plus two on speed and attack. It goes for Power Trick. Wait, 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 wait. Why Power Trick? Why Power Trick? The bad part about this is because now the attack and defense stats are switched. You might have 500 attack, but you only have so much in defense. And that's bad because I use a waterfall, which is super effective against that very, very, very low defense now. And unfortunately, your little strategy on that power trick on Shuckle is pretty much down the dream from the waterfall. So that didn't work out well. So here comes Lampert. I'm back to full house. The Stealth Rocks pretty much was a non factor with Romeo playing, so everything was looking pretty good. I'll go for a Stone Edge on Lapras, and I kind of predict it was going to stay alive because I know it has a lot of defense. It goes for Surf, and I'm like, I don't know if that thing has a lot of special attack, but it came close. But, thank goodness for Romeo Plank being part ground. I don't have to worry about Sandstorm. All I can do is pretty much get myself back into the fun. I predicted a switch, which is why I did Earthquake, but I didn't expect it to scumber. Not like it was going to matter, because all I'm going to do is pretty much do a waterfall because I'm already at plus two and I don't think Skarmory has enough HP to stay alive from it. No wonder it was a critical so it wouldn't matter anyway. So that plus two makes it plus four after with the critical. So Skarmory's out the way. All I'm going to do is get more HP and every day is going to be hunky dory. Here comes Tyranitar once again. And I'm going to go for the stand Earthquake, which may KO Tyranitar because, again, it's stab and plus two. And as I see Tyranitar's HP drilling away, I look at myself and say it was perfect that I brought in Wishcast. Because at first, I did not want to bring in Wishcast. Well, I changed my mind and, and switched between Gliscor and Wishcast. It was a good idea that I brought in Wishcast. Earthquake is pretty much going on one hit KO. Tyranitar and back again with Lapras. Not enough HP to survive anything. It is pretty much going to be a good game for Swan as uh, the Lapras is pretty much going to be KO. Thank you to Swan for a good game. And Romeo Plank, you're doing this again. Anyways, rate, comment, subscribe, give it a like. Skype for everything. Have a nice day. See you next time.